In this module, we're going to talk about the Electrification Feasibility Report, or EFR, itself and the tool um, that you'll be using to do this. In this portion, we're going to go through what the Electrification Feasibility Report is designed to do. And then there's an additional recording that will actually allow you to see um, entering an EFR or Electrification Feasibility Report directly into the tool. So there's kind of a how-to guide using the tool itself as a separate module. This will introduce you to it. Remember what we've stated before, the Electrification Feasibility Report is a screening tool. It has inputs for both the existing equipment as well as the planned equipment for replacement. It assesses the feasibility based on multiple criteria. And at the end of this, it will deem, is this a cost-effective solution? In other words, from the cost perspective, does this make sense to at least partially electrify this system for replacement? So stick with us. We're going to go through the general component now, and then you can watch the video on actually how to enter an electrification feasibility report. So here we are talking about the electrification feasibility report. Again, we often refer to these simply as EFRs. Currently, these are being used as a screening tool for when a like-for-like -like gas system is being bid on. In other words, when we looked at those ideal opportunities for partial or full electrification um, for either space heating or service water heating. Um, and the building owner is asking about replacing it with another gas system or a purely electric resistance system. This is the tool that is used to say, let's compare what a like for like gas bill bid would look like and what a partially or fully electrified bid would look like. There are several options again as part of the permitting process. Don't worry, we'll cover those again. Um, and I, it's important to note that the EFR tool is evolving over time. As we continue to learn more and more buildings come through this program and have electrification feasibility reports completed, our tool will continue to grow and get better. We're also looking for opportunities down the road of how this tool and potentially other tools may be used for very complex systems for electrification in a few years down the road. Let's talk about use case number one here, electrification feasibility reports for HVAC replacements. So this again assesses the feasibility of using an electric heat pump or dual fuel heat pump, sometimes referred to as a hybrid, when replacing HVAC equipment. And it compares the heat pump option to a natural gas system replacement on the following. It looks at the installed costs of both. It will predict some estimated annual energy cost changes in terms of a percentage. So in other words, does moving to a partially electrified or fully electrified version of this equipment um, result in a slightly increased cost, a very similar cost, or a slightly reduced cost? Again, these are estimates because all buildings are different, all use cases are different, just important to note. And then finally, the other component that goes into this is the social cost of carbon dioxide over the life of the equipment. So this assesses whether or not cost effectiveness is around based off of these different inputs. Again, as a reminder, this is just a screening tool. This is not an energy audit itself. If you want to learn more and you have a PDF version of this, you can click on the EFR website link. Or if you're watching this right now and you wanna learn more immediately, break out your smartphone or your tablet, scan this QR code, and it should take you to learning more about the electrification feasibility reports themselves. Similar to using electrification feasibility reports for HVAC for space heating, they can also be an option for looking at water heating replacements. So here we're looking about and talking about assessing the feasibility of using a heat pump water heater re when replacing gas water heating equipment. And again, it compares that either all electric or dual fuel option to a natural gas system on the installed costs. Again, that estimated annual energy cost change or percentage difference and the social cost of carbon dioxide over the life of the equipment. Once again, this is a screening tool. Um, it is not an energy audit itself. You can click on the link if you have the PDF version here 
uh, where it says EFR website or use your smartphone or tablet and scan that QR code and it will take you directly to the EFR. Once you have completed all of today's modules and you've taken and passed the quiz, you can sign up to use this EFR tool. So first things I'm gonna do is show you the steps that you need to do to complete in order to get access to the EFR tool. Remember, after watching this module, there is a video available um, that actually shows you how to use the tool itself. Um, it's very well put together. We highly encourage you watch that after this module. But next up, we're gonna talk about how to make sure you have access to using this EFR tool. So these are the steps to gaining access. First, it's optional, but it's always a good idea after having taken all of today's modules and completing the quiz. Again, you'll be listed on the City and County of Denver's website. This is a great opportunity for you to quickly check to make sure that your information is accurately represented on the website. It's optional. You can, at the same time that that process is happening, you could go to step two and fill out this form. Again, if you have a PDF version, you can click on the link or break out your smartphone or tablet and scan this QR code. And this form will request access to the online tool. Again, you do need to have passed the quiz. Um, again, that will both give you um, listing on the City and County of Denver website, and it will tell us that you are ready to get access to the EFR tool. Once you've done that, you will receive an email with some simple instructions, just a few steps. We just need to make sure all the information is collected correctly so that it's really easy for you in the future. And then you'll go through the process of you'll set up an account with your company profile and password, and you can enter the employee names that are most likely to perform an electrification feasibility report. This can be really handy if you're going to have, say, multiple sales agents or multiple people performing EFRs in the field. This is your opportunity to kind of have them listed. It will allow you later to kind of sort and view the different EFRs that have been submitted by your own employees if you needed to. So we just covered getting set up to be able to use the EFR tool. Now we wanna talk about a little bit of pre-work that goes into this before actually completing an electrification feasibility report. We've developed something what we call our pre-visit guidance. This is really a guide to help you communicate with the building owners and their facilities teams to get as much information as possible before you do a site visit. So before you go out and start measuring and inspecting to produce your bid, you wanna have as much of this information as possible. Having this in advance will give you some really nice heads up and a good starting point to be able to complete and fill out an EFR. So our guidance is split into two sections. The first are the must have items. Truly, if you're going to get the information you need to complete an EFR, you really will need to have all the things listed in the must have here. You'll need to know the size of the building as well as a, a decent estimate of the area that's going to be served by the piece of equipment being replaced. You'll wanna make sure that the building owner or the facilities team can give you access to any mechanical system spaces for the equipment being replaced. That may include basements, roofs, um, mechanical closets, etc. You'll wanna make sure you have access to any electrical rooms. If access is not available, perhaps Susan on their team is the only one who has keys to a very specific room um, because it also perhaps has their security equipment in it, um, something of that nature and the limited um, accessibility, then you're gonna wanna get as many details as possible about that space if it's not available. So this could be um, the building owner and their facilities team sending you diagrams and pictures and written words to describe what are in those rooms. You're going to need all of that information to fill this out. And then finally, this is really important. We at least need to have the gas and electric rate structure um, that's identified on the building owner's gas and electric bills. So what we mean by that, are they paying a residential electric rate or a commercial electric rate? How about gas? Are they on a time of use plan? We will need you to have that information to enter into the EFR. 
Now, while not required, a nice benefit would be also if you can help um, our team get access to the utility bills of the building owner. And this could be something as simple as helping to prepare them that this may be a request coming to them from our team. Um, so those are our must haves. Some nice to have items, not required, but boy, if the facilities team or the building owner has any of these, they can really make your job a lot easier and quite a bit faster. Um, so this could be um, getting any access to any building floor plans there. Um, any facility MEP drawings and mechanical schedules. Um, this may include things like if there is a maintenance um, for the rooftop unit, for instance, a maintenance plan. Um, what's happened in the last four visits um, from the maintenance contractor. Um, understanding things like the electric um, service breaker capacity and understanding of any additional uh, circuit capacity serving this equipment being evaluated for replacement. Is there more room on the panel, uh, et cetera? And then finally, understanding any existing electrical service capacity. Um, what is the wiring like? All of that type of information. Because there are some scenarios when switching from gas equipment to um, partially or fully electrified equipment, there may be some scenarios where there are some upgrades needed um, on the electrical system. So really thinking through this pre-visit guidance and working directly with the building owner and their facilities team can be very helpful to streamlining this entire process for you. After this module, we encourage you to watch the short video on doing the EFR in the online app. Once you're completed with that process, an electrification feasibility report summary will be emailed to you to share with the building owners and will also be used by permitting and the program for determining incentives. So let's take a look at what components of the EFR summary are used and who they're used by. We'll start at the bottom. First, we have the section that is called the cost parity section. And this will be what is used in permitting when this is selected as one of the options. Next, we have the section that is most commonly used by you, the contractors, when working with building owners. And this is the point where you can talk about the cost summary. Um, so help make the business case for you on why this is a good advantage for the building owner. Finally, almost all of this is factored in in some way by the building electrification program to determine incentives. So again, be thinking about these things as you collect the original data, as you create proposals, and then as you communicate to building owners the results of the electrification feasibility report. So a quick reminder, again, let's talk about what an electrification feasibility report is not. This is not a complete energy model. This is not an ASHRAE level audit, um, typically an ASHRAE level two or three audit. It is not an EUI or energy use intensity or energy use index as they're referred to. It's not for comparing very different systems. This is for like for like type of systems. So a rooftop unit, um, swapped out gas only to a partially electrified dual fuel system, that is what this is used for. It would not be for comparing a current rooftop unit to let's say a multi-zone VRF system. Some other important notes, this does not include things like envelope improvements. So potentially the building that you're bidding on is also considering maybe roof or attic insulation or upgrading windows at the same time. None of that would be included, nor does it include ventilation upgrades, which are a great place when we're dealing with HVAC systems to see improvements in buildings. It's just not that nuanced. This is truly, again, a screening tool looking at that cost effectiveness for us to help identify when it makes sense to say electrify this building. I just want to put this back into the context with the permitting process changes. Remember, if there is a gas system and the request is to bid another gas system, um, then we would have to pick two of the following options as part of the permitting process. Electrification and feasibility report, right sizing the HVAC, and gas pipe pressure testing. If it's space cooling only, if it was the examples we gave earlier of just swapping an AC out for a heat pump, then you would need to pick one of these options. 
So remember, an EFR is an option um, in, in our HVAC world. And there are exceptions for these, as mentioned in previous modules, emergency replacement, or the scenario where it's already been decided that a heat pump is going to be installed and you're not even producing a bid for a gas like for like piece of equipment. So the EFR again is a screening tool that fits in as one of these options. This is for space heating. In just a minute, we'll talk about the same concept for water heating. As promised, we're now looking at the electrification feasibility report as an option, again, for service water heating. So in this scenario, you'll need to pick one of these two if bidding on a gas like for like replacement piece of equipment. So they have a gas tank water heater or a gas tankless water heater and the request to you is a bid to replace with another gas one. Um, you have to pick one of these two options. You can either do gas pressure pipe testing for the entire building, not just that device, or you can complete an electrification feasibility report, which would include what the heat pump option looks like. So keep that in mind. These are options currently now, but down the road, this is going to be closer and closer to impacting the actual electrification requirements beginning in 2025. So it really does seem like a pretty good idea to learn this stuff now and to integrate it into your bidding process. Again, similar to with HVAC, there are exceptions for not requiring you to pick any of these options. That would be an emergency replacement scenario as described in the previous module, or when the building owner has already decided to install a heat pump water heater. In these scenarios, these options are not required. And with that, the next video will be actually touring the EFR tool. If you wanna just take a quick look at it, you can use your smartphone or tablet and scan this QR code and it will take you to that link. But if you've not yet registered um, or enrolled as a contractor, there won't be a whole lot you can do yet. So please move forward to the short video on actually navigating and utilizing the electrification feasibility report tool.